may picture me driving that 40 HP car for all she was worth over the crisp moor roads on that shining May morning, glancing back at first over my shoulder and looking anxiously to the next turning, then driving with a vague eye just wide enough awake to keep on the highway, where I was thinking desperately of what I had found in Scudder's pocketbook. The 15th day of June was going to be a day of destiny, a bigger destiny than the killing of a Dago. It was so big that I didn't blame Scudder for keeping me out of the game and wanting to play a lone hand. That, I was pretty clear, was his intention. The whole story was in the notes, with gaps, you understand, which he would have filled up from his memory. He stuck down his authorities too and had an odd trick of giving them all a numerical value and then striking a balance which stood for the reliability of each stage in the yarn. This war was going to come as a mighty surprise to Britain. Carolides' death would set the Balkans by the ears and then Vienna would chip in with an ultimatum. Russia wouldn't like that and there would be high words but Berlin would play the peacemaker and pour oil on the waters, till suddenly she would find a good cause for a quarrel, pick it up, and in five hours let fly at us. That was the idea, and a pretty good one too. This war was going to come as a mighty surprise to Britain. It was no question of preventing a war. That was coming, as sure as Christmas. Had been arranged, said Scudder, ever since February 1912. Carolides was going to be the occasion. The bare bones of the tale were all that was in the book. These, and one queer phrase which occurred half a dozen times inside brackets. Thirty-nine steps was the phrase, and at its last time of use it ran, 39 steps, I counted them, high tide, 10.17 p.m., I could make nothing of that. In spite of all the nonsense talked in Parliament, there was a real working alliance between France and Britain, and the two general staffs met every now and then and made plans for joint action in case of war. Well, in June, a very great swell was coming over from Paris, and he was going to get nothing less than a statement of the disposition of the British Home Fleet on mobilization. It was something uncommonly important.
I say, oh, bless me, I'm dreadfully sorry. Are you hurt? R- really, I, I must apologise. Oh, bless my soul. Do tell me you're all right. My blame, sir. It's lucky that I did not add homicide to my follies. Well, that's the end of my Scotch motor tour. Well, it might have been the end of my life. You're the right sort of fellow. I can spare a quarter of an hour, and my house is two minutes off. I'll see you clothed and fed and snug in bed. Where's your kit, by the way? Is it in the burn along with the car? It's in my pocket. A toothbrush? I'm a colonial and travel light. A colonial? By God, you're the very man I've been praying for. Are you by any blessed chance a free trader? A free trader? I am. Oh, good show! Thank you. Hmm. You find me in a deuce of a mess, Mr... Oh, by the by, you haven't told me your name. Uh, Twiston. Twiston? Any relation to old Tommy Twiston of the 60th? No? Oh, well. Well, you see, I'm the Liberal candidate for this part of the world, and I had a meeting on tonight at Brattleburn, and that's my chief town, in an infernal Tory stronghold. I'd got the colonial ex-premier fellow, Crumpleton, coming to speak for me tonight and had the thing tremendously billed, and the whole place ground-baited. This afternoon, I had a wire from the ruffian saying he'd got influenza at Blackpool, and here I am, left to do the whole thing myself. I had meant to speak for ten minutes, and now must go on for forty. And though I've been racking my brains for three hours to think of something, I simply cannot last the course. Now, you've got to be a good chap and help me. You're a free trader, and can tell our people what a a washout protection is in the colonies. All you fellows have the gift of the gab. I wish to heaven I had it. I'll be forever more in your debt. All right. Um, I'm not much good as a speaker, but I'll tell them a bit about Australia. Oh, 